Oh god, that smell is unbearable. The rotten smell of a garbage man. It's making me nauseous. I can't tolerate it for a single second more. Get out of my face and out of my nostrils now! Do you have any idea what you just did? That was insane! How could you do that to another human being? And then you have the audacity to insult me on top of that. What the hell is wrong with you? A dirty intruder came into my home, so I just chased him away, that's all. It's what any man would do to defend his property and his family. I only came here to ask for your permission to marry Lena. That was the whole reason. If you had an issue with it, all you had to do was say no. I didn't expect to get scalding water thrown at me. I was shocked. Is that how you treat your guests? No, of course not. <laughs> I was just sanitizing the place, that's all. If your home is infested with germs, you'll fall ill. Can't let them multiply, you see. Germs? Are you kidding me? I'm not sick at all. I'm not repulsive. I'm not going to contaminate you with anything. I shower every single day. That's more than I can say for some people. Shut your mouth, garbage man. It doesn't matter what you claim. No. When you do what you do, when a man wallows in garbage all day like you do, even a shower won't wash away the stink and the filth. You have some gall trying to marry my daughter. That kind of conduct will get you in serious trouble. Meddling where you don't belong. I'm the president of a huge company. That means my daughter is the president's daughter. Do you get that? Of course I get that. I'm not stupid. Then you should know your limits. What made you think you could snatch my daughter away? You! A man who collects garbage all day long. What gives you the right to be near her? I mean, I was appalled. A garbage man wooing the daughter I've nurtured since she was just an infant. So you think that I collect garbage all day? That was the reason you attacked me with boiling water when I asked for your blessing? What else could it be? Just because I said that I work as a garbage man. That's what this is all about. That's all I had to hear from you. And not only that, I heard it's not only you who works as a garbage man, but your father before you. You think I'm going to let my precious daughter marry into a family like that? A family whose father and son can't even land a decent job. I don't think so. No way. You can keep all that garbage to yourself. Leave my family alone and don't taint them with your dirtiness. Go find yourself a nice garbage woman. <laughs> there must be plenty of them out there. You should know, I actually take pride in my work. If we didn't have people taking care of the garbage, this country would be buried in trash. It's a vital job. People are able to live in clean environments because of the work that I do. Without people like me, you'd be drowning in everyone's waste. Oh, shut up. You don't think I know that? I don't need you to tell me. I wasn't born yesterday. I know that someone has to do that kind of work, but in this case, it's not just someone, it's you. And you take pride in doing such lowly work for some reason. Is it really the kind of job that allows you to look forward to the future, to your plans and dreams? Or are you just content with living in the present, with no aspirations or goals? Well, not exactly, but... Well, there you go. I mean, it's obviously the kind of job that no one wants to do. Where's the pride in it? There's no upward mobility there, and the fact that you're even proud of it is even worse. Don't you have any desire, any ambition to make something more of yourself, to improve your skills, to advance your career, to earn more money? It always ends up that the people who do those kinds of jobs are the dregs of society. They have no chance of rising up, and they don't even want to. They're just satisfied with being at the bottom, with being worthless. Please, stop talking that way. I'm a respectable member of the workforce, just like you. There's no need to disrespect me like that, to look down on me, judge me, and insult me. 
And you all protect each other down at the bottom, don't you? It's like the cockroach protecting the fly. He'll defend your good-for-nothing bodies too, I imagine. You know, if I happen to see a cockroach or a fly, I'm going to throw some hot water on it or do anything else I see fit to get rid of it. That's what a respectable member of society does. He eliminates pests and nuisances. So you're calling me and the rest of the people that work in sanitation cockroaches and flies? You're comparing us to insects and to things that are beneath you. What? Would you prefer I called you rats and maggots? I'm flexible. <laughs> I can call you whatever I want, as long as it reflects your true nature. You lowly, disgusting, repugnant nature. You'll go to great lengths just to belittle someone, won't you? You'll use any words, any actions, any means to make someone feel small, inferior, and unworthy. If I used insecticide on a human body, it would probably be harmful to it, just like it is on insects. And despite what you may believe, I'm an eco-friendly and health-conscious kind of guy. So for someone like you, that has been roaming around in dirty garbage all day, I chose boiling water for sterilization. It's easy on the environment, and it gets the job done. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you must be crawling with germs and bacteria and diseases. You must be a walking health hazard. So I did you a favor, really. I tried to cleanse you and make you more acceptable. This is really disappointing to me. I can't believe that Lena has someone like you for a father. Someone who is so cruel and heartless. Ha! You're disappointed? Well, imagine how disappointed I am then. My daughter tells me she's bringing home the man she's going to marry. And it turns out to be some lowlife who works at a dump site. Imagine! Of course, you understand. I can't let my precious daughter marry someone like you, who spends all day mucking about in the dreck at the bottom most level of society. Someone who has no future, no prospects, no dignity. Despite how horrible you've been to me, I thought maybe I'd try to convince you one last time, but I've given it up now. I've realized it's hopeless. That's a wise decision for someone like you. I'm glad you've decided to see some sense. So you finally realized your status in the world. You finally realized that you're nothing. That you are nobody. Yes, I've realized you've made it clear that this isn't a place I can be involved in. That this isn't a place where I can be happy and be respected. Exactly. I'm glad you've come to your senses. My family and I are in a place that someone like you has no hope of reaching. I mean, really, the fact that my daughter could even entertain being with a garbage man. Well, I just don't know where I went wrong with her. Anyway, if I ever see you again, I'll throw twice as much boiling water at you as I did today. I'll turn your smug face into a face even you won't be able to stand to look at. I'll make you regret ever crossing paths with me or daring to think you could be a part of my family. My god, you're a monster. If you can do something like that, that's beyond crazy. It's terrifying how evil and wicked you are. You could seriously injure someone that way. You should be terrified. You should never forget it. If you don't want to get burned by boiling water, never set foot here again. Well, then I suppose I won't marry her. Don't you even think of telling her or anyone else. It's me who decides to approve or reject the marriage. Me. If you say it first, it will look like my family and my daughter were spurned by you. So just keep your mouth shut. You got that? I'll be the one to announce it to everyone. But you can be sure. This engagement is over. We're breaking it off. So have fun with your miserable life. Cleaning up the mess of other people and groveling at their feet. Being despised by everyone. And never... Dare to look at my sweet daughter again. She's way too good and innocent for you and your dirt, you worthless trash. Roger that. Goodbye. Greetings, Mr. President. Julian. It's a pleasure to see you here. Hello, Weston. What can I do for you? Do you have any recollection of who I am? Of course. You're Lena's father. 
How could I forget? Yes, yes, that's correct. You see, the fact that you became the president of this prestigious company, well, it's really impressive. Well, when I first heard your name announced, I thought to myself, no way. Is that really the same person? It can't be possible. But after attending this splendid inauguration party, I saw your face and I knew it was indeed you. It really is the truth. My future son-in-law, a company president. That's astounding. I'm very proud of you. Your son-in-law? Excuse me? What are you talking about? Well, if you marry Lena, you'll become my son-in-law, won't you? That's how it works, right? If you were able to become the president of this company, then you're certainly a qualified and respectable person to hand my precious daughter off to. You have my blessing. Okay, hold on a minute. Do you not remember what you did to me? How can you act so casually? Ah, you must be referring to the incident with the boiling water. Ugh, that was dreadful. Even remembering it is just horrifying. But it was just a minor misunderstanding, you know? It's all just water under the bridge now. I told you, not to hold it against me forever. Let bygones be bygones. That inhumane, barbaric thing you did to me? You want me to not hold that against you? Perhaps you've already started to lose your mind. Maybe early onset dementia or something like that? Ha ha ha, that's hilarious. I see Mr. President has a good sense of humor too. No, I'm perfectly fine. That's not an issue for me. This is completely unrelated to that. Ah, is that so? That's unfortunate. What do you mean that what's unfortunate? If you were even just a little bit senile, you'd probably be a little more content. Life would be simpler for you, because from now on, you'll experience nothing but hell. I'm sure I don't understand what you mean. Why are you saying such terrible things to me? You want to marry my daughter, don't you? I said okay, as long as you're president. I say it's okay. Please, take my daughter, take good care of her, and give her a nice life. I don't see what's so bad about that. It's a long way from hell. I might even go so far as to call it heaven. It's a happy end for everyone involved. There are so many things I could say right now. I don't even know where to begin. It's a little fast, but when shall we have the wedding? People are still here at the party. Is it okay if I announce the big news about your engagement to everyone? Save that nonsense for yourself. Don't make a fool of yourself. Huh? Nonsense? I'm not talking nonsense. Come on, I thought you wanted to marry my daughter. You got cold feet or something? Are you having second thoughts? Me? Mary Lena? She's already married, isn't she? With our most handsome ex-employee? They eloped, didn't you know? No, that can't be true. That's just a rumor. You must be mistaken. You're lying to me. No, really, they really did. I'm certain of my sources. They're first-hand sources, after all. She must have decided not to tell you after what you did to me. I can't say I blame her. It's probably for the best that way. What? No, I'm her father. How dare she not tell me? How could she do this to me? After I broke things off with her, she came to my work. I thought maybe she was coming to apologize for what you did. I thought that maybe she wanted to get back together with me, but she came to meet Lucas instead. Lucas? Doesn't ring any bells. Who is he? Lucas also drives a garbage truck. So no wonder she didn't want to tell you. His family is poor, and he's been working for us since he turned 16. He's a great employee. He really knows his way around the city. What? Does that mean he didn't even finish high school? Oh, I can't take this. Of all the kinds of men he could be, he had to be a guy handling other people's garbage all day long? How could she marry someone like that? Lena has always had a weakness for handsome guys. And she fell in love at first sight with Lucas. She approached him right away without any hesitation. 
I was angry that she just ignored my presence there after what we had had together. But I thought, well, if it makes her happy, I suppose it's a good thing. I just wanted her to be happy, and so I helped them elope. They've moved out of state already, far away from you. I hooked Lucas up with a job with an acquaintance of mine, another garbage man. He's a hardworking guy. I respect him for that. Please do something. Please help me. Do something? About what? What do you mean? What are you asking me to do? You and Lena both have been deceived by Lucas. You both need to realize that you're the right man for Lena, not him. You're the one I approve of as her father. The only one I approve of. Please do something to help her. Please, we can't let her live the rest of her life with that scumbag. He's not good enough for her. But the fact that I'm a garbage man wouldn't change. Have you forgotten about that? How am I different from Lucas? If he's a scumbag, then so am I. We're both in the same line of work. There's a world of difference between the president of a company and a lowly employee who handles the trash. If you're the president, you're on a level playing field with me. Your status is different. You have power and prestige. When a man becomes the head of a company, that means he's truly become a full-fledged man. An established adult capable of holding his own. Someone who is just picking up garbage day in and day out is at the bottom rung of society. He's a lowlife. A nobody. He has no future. So you and I are equal now. Are you really in a position to say that? Do you really think that? Yes, I am. What do you mean? Why wouldn't I be? I'm still the president of my company. I still have my business. I wouldn't call you and I equal by any stretch. For multiple reasons, to be honest, but the very least because you won't be president much longer. You're going to lose everything. Huh? What are you talking about? What do you mean by that? Do you understand what you've done? You've burned my arm. You've scarred me for life. Simply because I work in the garbage disposal industry. You looked down on me and treated me like trash. That was an accident, I told you. That was a mistake, a misunderstanding. I didn't mean to do that. I won't waste my time listening to your excuses. If you have something you really want to say, then you can go ahead and say it to the police. They'll be interested in hearing your side of the story. The police? What about them? Why are you bringing them up? Because you're going to be arrested for assault, for burning me. You're going to face the consequences of your actions. Wait, what? No, but we're talking about an incident that happened a year ago. The statute of limitations on that has long expired. You can't get me on that. It's too late. You have no case. It's five years. That's how long it is. Um, what's five years? The statute of limitations for assault is five years. There's plenty of time left to arrest you, I think. You're not off the hook yet. Wait, it's that long? Well, I mean, I didn't do it deliberately. You should know that. I had no idea you were going to be the next president. My hand just slipped. It was an accident. Your hand slipped? Yeah, okay, sure. When I was just a lowly garbage man, you were fine with hurting me. You didn't care about me at all. But now that I'm the president, you want to take it all back? You want to pretend it never happened? No, listen. You just don't understand. It was an honest mistake. You have to believe me. I didn't really mean it. I'm sorry. Tell your story to the police. Maybe you'll get sympathy from them. I doubt it, though. I don't want to listen to you anymore. I'm tired of hearing your excuses. You're pathetic. But wait! Oh, by the way, about your company? You guys used to make the parts for pressing cargo and packing it into packing boxes, right? Are those the parts that my company orders for the garbage trucks? 
Well, I asked a favor of my business partner who manufactures and sells garbage trucks, and we've made an arrangement for me to buy the parts I need from his company instead. He gave me a good deal. No, no, no. Is that why the orders we've received for parts are so low today? Is that why our sales are dropping? Yep, I just made the deal today. You're going to lose your biggest client. And I'm going to save a lot of money. It's a win-win situation. For me at least, not for you. If you do this to me, my company won't be able to survive. If our primary product is taken away, we'll face immediate financial problems. We'll lose our revenue and our market share. We'll have to lay off employees and cut our costs. We'll have no chance of competing with our rivals. <laughs> Financial problems? That's putting it nicely. You'll go bankrupt. You'll lose everything you have. It's not just your main product. It's your other product too. Your parts for the tanker trucks. Orders for those too will start decreasing today. You'll see a sharp decline in your sales. You'll have no customers left. What? No. What have you done? How could you do this to me? The concrete company that you sell to? The one that orders the tanker trucks? Yeah, that's my friend's company. <laughs> when I told him about the situation, he said he'd changed his vendor. He said he'd rather buy from someone else. Someone who doesn't treat people like garbage. So, your main product is gone, and now your second biggest seller is gone as well. You're finished, aren't you? You have no products left to sell. Then what am I supposed to do now? I literally just invested in some new machines this month. I even got an additional loan from my bank using my house as collateral. I thought I was making a smart move. You think I give a crap? All I did was come to your house and ask for your blessing to marry your daughter. It was you who treated me so horribly. Literally, in your own words. You treated me as if I was an insect you had to exterminate. You poured boiling water on me. You burned my arm. At that time, I had no power, no authority over you. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't fight back. But I worked harder and harder at work, and eventually, my father recognized that and gave me the company. And now that I am where I am, I won't allow you to treat me like that ever again. I won't let you get away with it. I said I won't. I won't. Not ever again. It's just like I said, right? We're both presidents, leaders of our companies now. We're in the same spot. We can help each other out. We can cooperate and collaborate. And it's like I just said, you and I are not equal. You and I are nothing alike. You're a cruel and greedy man. I'm a fair and honest man. You're a loser and a failure. I'm a winner and a success. If things stay the way they are, I'll be ruined. You won't leave me out in the cold, will you? We should have an understanding between us, you and I. Between you and me, I've been on a bit of a losing streak at the casinos recently as well. So even with the new investments I've made, I've got a whole lot more work to do just to keep up. I've got a lot of debts to pay. I've got a lot of pressure on me. Do you hear me? I don't care. That's the situation you've gotten yourself into. It's not my problem, it's your problem. You made your bed, now lie in it. You gambled away your money, you wasted your resources, you dug your own grave. But if nothing changes, I'll lose my house and go bankrupt. Ah, well, we're always looking for new employees here. Why don't you come and work for us? You'll have to get your hands a little dirty, though. Of course, you'll have to handle the garbage. Me? Work for a garbage company as a garbage man. You want me to drive around all day in those garbage collectors and collect people's trash. You can't make a living otherwise, can you? So why don't you join us? It's not so bad. 
Maybe you can even learn a thing or two. You're asking too much. You understand, don't you? Please, I'm a president of a company for God's sakes. I mean me sliding down to the bottom of the ladder, coming home with a layer of other people's filth on me every single day. Can you even picture it? I can't. It's unthinkable. It's unbearable. I'm offering you a job. You're in your 40s now, in debt, with no job and no house. How about you stop making a fuss about it and show some appreciation instead? As I told you, I could easily press charges for what you did to me last year. But instead, I'm offering you a chance to redeem yourself. A chance to start over. <laughs> but please, think of my social standing. Please, think of my reputation and my pride. I don't know about your social standing, but in my eyes, you're one of the absolute lowest of the low. You may have had a lot of money before, but morally, you've been bankrupt for as long as I've known you. You have no integrity. You deserve nothing but contempt. After that, Lena's father tried desperately to contact her and demand her help, but she had changed her number so he could no longer reach her. Safe to say, he had fallen far. His company went bankrupt, the bank foreclosed on his house, and all he had left was a lot of debt. He came back to me sniffing and crying and actually took me up on my job offer. Now he's become his own worst nightmare and spends all of his time picking up other people's trash. That is his life now. I wish I could say it was teaching him something, but for now, it just seems like he's stewing in his own hatred of the situation because of his own prejudice. It's impossible for him to take pride in doing good work and being an asset to his company, as well as an essential part of his community. But he's been forced into a corner and really has nowhere else to go. So he swallows his pride and does the work silently. I wonder if he hates himself as much as he hated me, now that he's just a low-life garbage man. As for Lena and Lucas, well, despite the steps they took to get married and live a life together, it seems like Lena fell in love yet again with another man. I heard that she left Lucas for him. The poor guy. But maybe it was inevitable. Maybe it's better. It's over sooner than later. I don't know if she'll ever be satisfied. Now I think about how quickly she moved on from me, and it makes more sense. When I look back on things, I realize that I dodged a bullet without knowing it. I'm truly grateful that I didn't marry such a fickle, stupid woman, and that I didn't become the stepson of her idiotic, loathsome father.